Hello everybody, this is M and this is VG Cantina, the video game podcast where I, your host M, just talk about random video game stuff that happened throughout the day, my thoughts on games, what I've played, and any other random things that may come to mind. It's really just a rambling podcast. But let's go ahead and start off with the biggest news of today, which was obviously the PlayStation State of Play. Was around 32 minutes, showed off several games, capping off with the death loop uh, in depth look. So, without further ado, let's just go ahead and look into some of these games that we got here. So, the first game we have that uh, got us started off was Moss Book 2. It's a VR game for PlayStation, um, obviously, the sequel to Moss. I remember when Moss first came out, it was for PlayStation VR. I thought it was a very charming looking game. I believe it was very well received. I liked how uh, it was an over the top uh, perspective uh, where you controlled the environment and your character, obviously. Um, not really much to say. I think it's a really great looking game. I love its style. I love its world, I guess. Um, I'm glad that this uh, game is getting a second one. Um, I'm, I'm, pretty sure it's fairly adored by a lot of people uh, so we'll just see where it goes um, there is no release date though so it looks like it's still just in development uh, I guess really the only question that I have is um, when or not when but for what platforms will it release will it release on the PlayStation VR original will it release on the VR 2 on both um, is it going to release on other platforms? Uh, because that could also tell us whether or not they'll do it on both the old VR and the VR2 or if they'll just stick with the VR2. Because uh, with these types of VR games, since uh, it still hasn't grown into a large pool of uh, players, uh, you want to get it to as many hands as possible. So obviously, you know, uh, some people might not be able to get the VR2 just as they're having a hard time getting a PS5. So putting it on the original VR, uh, PlayStation VR, would be a smart move. But only time will tell. Uh, so like I said, as of now, no release date, just the confirmation that it is being worked on. Next game we got here is Arcade Geddon. It's a mouthful. This is from the developers of Friday the 13th and the Predator Hunting Grounds game. Uh, it is currently available as an early access on the PS5 and PC via the Epic Game Store. This looks like a cooperative multiplayer shooter where you go out and um, obviously do some shooting, collect some loot, so I guess just another schluter. Uh I don't know. This one didn't really do much for me. I like the colors, and that's kind of really all I can say. I love the name. I think it's a great name. Um, but other than that, I don't know. I just don't know. I have to. I don't know if I'll even try it out because I'm not really much into schluters or that kind of thing. Um, but hey, if it's fun, uh, hope the people that enjoy those types of things have a blast with it. But I don't know. I can't say for certain. Next one is the Tribes of Midgard. Uh, I think these are from the uh, devs that made Valheim, or I could just be confusing it because they're both Norse Viking type games. Uh, but this looks like a survival RPG with uh, some co-op with up to 10 people. Looks like some sort of dungeon crawler. I believe this is already uh, released on PC and this is just it coming to the PS5 and PS4. It comes with the tagline of the Season 1 The Wolf Saga. Uh, it features two main game modes, a session-based Sage Saga mode, almost said Sage, I did say Sage, uh, and an Endless Survival mode. So that's pretty cool, being able to switch between two different modes, probably give it a lot of uh, variety. This looks fun. I, I think, I like dungeon crawlers, they're, uh, they're nice to kind of unwind and maybe turn your brain off and just uh, go out and just kill some things. I like the style and the look of this. I just generally like the look of Viking Norse stuff, and um, it's really pushing a lot of buttons for me. 
uh, also has some uh, customization for its characters and all. I mean, that's pretty normal for dungeon crawlers and whatnot. But yeah, this looks like something I'll probably check out. Uh, probably something fun to play with friends or just to mess around with. Uh, hoping, hoping it's pretty good because uh, I can I can really sink my teeth into that game. Then after that we have Fist, Forge in Shadow Torch. This comes from uh, the, I believe it was the China Superstar Initiative or something like that, that uh, PlayStation has introduced where they get a whole bunch of indie developers from China uh, to uh, fund and make games uh, to be placed on PlayStation. I believe that's how that works. I know the biggest game from that initiative was Lost Soul Aside, which looks like uh, some sort of Devil May Cry Chinese edition. Um, well, not Chinese edition, but uh, some Chinese developers take uh, on an action, character action game. Looks a lot like Devil May Cry in some aspects. Um, but this is the second biggest uh, game that comes out from that initiative. Uh, personally, my favorite of it, uh, Fist. Uh, it's a 2.5D uh, Metroidvania, I believe. Uh, and it looks like you play as uh, a rabbit with a giant mechanical fist. Um, uh, this They showed this a couple times, and they showed gameplay of it, and I've obviously been sold uh, from what I've seen. Um, it looks like you just showed a little more, uh, just some more progress on the game. Uh, maybe a little bit of uh, story details. I mean, you can, it wasn't a lot, but you can kind of guess uh, what might happen. Probably something have been about Shadow Torch. Maybe it's a town or something. You're going back, you're fighting. You might be some sort of resistance member. Um, just a couple scenes to kind of take away from. Um, but yeah, this uh, this is coming out September 7th. I will definitely be looking for it. Um, and I just can't wait. I really like, I really enjoy these Metroidvania, you know, 2.5D uh, games. Uh, you don't get a lot of really good ones, but when you do, they really are fun. Really, really fun. Uh, after that, we have Hunter's Arena Legends. Uh, this is uh, a Battle Royale game. Uh, with players fighting against demons and one another for survival, like the, any other type of battle royale game. Uh, I don't know about this one. Uh, I'm not too big on the battle royale game genre. Maybe it's just because I suck at video games and I'm just not good and I almost die and lose immediately in those games. Uh, but it looks like it can be fun. It kind of reminds me of this other game that kind of came out recently. I think it was Naraka Blade Point. I don't think that was a, uh, I don't think that was a battle royale, but I think it had like PVP elements with uh, melee combat and whatnot. And I think this also has uh, that. Uh, so there could be some similarities to it, but we'll see how it comes out. Um, it releases on August third for PS five and PS four and Steam as well. Uh, but it will be, I believe this is a uh, free via PS Plus, so um, if you have it, it really doesn't hurt to download it and try it, see how it goes. Uh, there's also cross-play, so you can play with friends from all the other uh, systems. Uh, but that's coming out August 3rd, 2021. All right, next game, another big hitter other than Fist is Sifu. I love everything about this game. When it first came out, when I first saw it, Thought it was great. Loved the title. Loved the um, the uh, I'm blanking on the word here. The uh, icon on the back of the title, uh, its logo, I guess. Uh, the gameplay looks amazing. I think the devs were the uh, same devs of uh, Absolver, I believe. That PvP, uh, open world or not open world, but like world, uh, fighting, uh, game. Th I mean th this. I don't know why there hasn't been a lot of other games that have this kung fu style gameplay. I think, I mean, when I was growing up, I, I know, you know, kung fu movies and those types of things are super popular and super dope to watch and pretend to be and, you know, nunchucks and bats and crowbars and just martial arts in general. 
Um, so I'm just glad to see that uh, we have a game here that looks great. Looks like it plays great. It's coming out. Uh, some interesting tidbits about this. It looks like uh, I think they alluded it to to it before because you had snippets of it uh, shown where your character looks like it, he he was uh, getting older, and it looks like they confirmed it here where uh, when you lose you age up. Um, uh, it seems like there it doesn't really affect uh, gameplay as much. Like, you don't become weaker as you age. Um, but there is a limit, so I'm guessing, you know, if you die of old age, then you just restart, and you go from there. That's an interesting uh, mechanic. I don't know how that fits into the story, or if they just wanted to do that because it sounded cool. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, it was delayed, unfortunately. It was really funny, because the trailer was kind of hype. It had this really cool music. And whatnot, and then it showed the title and the release date at the end, and then it made a big music drop, and it just delayed itself to 2022. That was really funny. There, it's like, a, like, oh man, check out this game. It's so hype. Oh, and it's delayed. Oh, it's like that's not a that's not a hype moment, but you kind of put it to the song like that. Um, I don't know, but I'm I'm still excited for it. I'm still I still can't wait for it. There's only one criticism I have of that game, and that's the sound design of like the punches. They don't sound meaty enough. It sounds like you're kind of punching pillows. I mean, there's some satisfying sound when you get your opponent or your enemies and you bash them into like objects, like tables and whatnot, or you hit them with weapons. Like that has a nice satisfying sound, but when it's just punching, uh, it just doesn't feel like it doesn't sound that impactful. I don't know. I mean, I don't get into fights regularly, so I don't know how fist punching on skin or body parts sound, but I feel like for this, they should probably amp that up a little bit. That's definitely my only criticism of the game, because when you, you know, any sort of combat, everything about it is important to making you feel like, you know, you're badass and you're attacking things. So sound design is a really important part of that. And if it just sounds like you're punching pillows, that I mean, even though the combat looks super satisfying and super dope, it just feels like it, it might kind of pitter out uh, the further you play with it. But that's really my only uh, gripe with it. Hopefully they uh, address that. And once it comes out, I'll, be, uh, I'll definitely be looking and playing that. All right. Next game, we got Jet the Far Shore. Uh, I don't know what to make of this game. Uh, it's a, it looks like a, like a No Man's Sky type deal where you travel and explore worlds and you, you're on your ship or you're on foot and you're traversing and you have traversal mechanics and whatnot. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Um, obvious, you know, I'm not the type of person to to be like a game has to have action it's got to be about combat and you know brutal fighting and whatnot I, I enjoy playing you know games that are more lax or more you know different and whatnot i don't mind that um but i just don't know i, I don't know what to tell from this game i mean they, they were explaining it fairly well um very much about discovery and whatnot and, and space but I don't know. I, th I think it's something that you you would have to play and kind of figure out yourself, which unfortunately is kind of detrimental to really any game. Um, but it looks like it's going to be launching later this year for PS4, PS5. Um, I'll probably look for reviews on that and uh, see what's up with it. Uh, if, uh, if there's anything positive to take away from it, I might pick it up. Like I said, having, you know, I, I think games don't just need to be about action and, you know, thrill and adrenaline and whatnot you know games can also be about relaxation and just you know mood setting type deals to put you in a in a type of state to where you're just you know like i said relaxing i mean you got your animal crossings your farming simulators or whatnot and it just seems like games that don't have those sort of styles like the like the cue or the soft tone or whatnot styles they're automatically bunched up with like those types of action games so when you don't have action in those games, when they're clearly not supposed to be that, 
people just kind of write them off, and I, I think that's sad. And we'll probably get into that with uh, some of the other stuff that's coming up. Uh, but anyways, the next game we have here is Demon Slayer, the Hinokami Chronicles. Uh, this uh, game has been showing up a lot recently. Uh, I mean, it's based on the anime. It seems like it's a fighting action type game. I thought it, uh, I was kind of confused looking at it. I thought it was kind of like those Naruto games where it's an arena fighter. Uh, not much to say. It's not really my deal. I mean, I enjoy anime and whatnot, but uh, I always kind of groan at the fact that a lot of these anime games um, are kind of just relegated to fighting games. Nothing wrong with fighting games, but like, it's either... In fact, I actually prefer a lot of the anime fighting games, the, the 2D ones, like um, the Super, the Dragon Ball Fighter games and whatnot. Um, but these arena type of fighting ones, I don't know, they just don't do it to me. It just seems like a lazy, just design thing where they're like, well, there's not a lot we can do with the anime IP of whatever uh, we're, we're working on. So let's just put them in an arena and have them fight. I mean, you just you see that so often, all the way back to the PlayStation Two era with with Dragon Ball, and then Naruto, and then um, uh, what, what was that one game? The the Shonen Shonen Jump or Jump Force. There you go. That one. Uh, it, just, it just feels like it is just kind of like something to fall back on, and I don't know. But I mean, if if I love I love Demon Slayer. Hopefully, uh, the people that play it that enjoy it uh, find you know, some enjoyment out of it. But for me, I think I'll just pass on it. All right, next one, another heavy hitter, Lost Judgment. Uh, this uh, comes from the devs from the Yakuza series. Uh, and this uh, follows the sequel of Judgment or Judge Eyes, however you wanna uh, call the game. Uh, just looks like more Judgment, more Yakuza. Uh, I think I believe the devs said they wanted to make the Yakuza series uh, more of the um, turn-based RPG style they had with Seven, like a Dragon, and they wanted to have this Judgment uh, series be more like the the fighting type of games uh, that Yakuza was. Uh, I mean, not much to say. I love Yakuza. I love Yakuza One, where they had uh, Mark Hamill do uh, a voice for. Uh, I think it was. Uh, Mashima, I think. Oh God, I, yeah. My mind is blanking, but I I love those games. Uh, they're they're serious, but they're also goofy. They have a ton of mini games, which I mean, this this game looks like it'll have no shortage of. In fact, it looks like it'll have even better mini games. Uh, you got like a Mario Kart style, which was in other games, uh, but this one looks just better robot fighting ddr style type things just a whole bunch of things to just kill time with uh it has a intense story that will most likely also have goofy side quest which is just the main appeal of these yakuza style games and um man the, i mean i'm i'm excited for this i mean it's fun it, it's it's essentially a gigantic meme um, and I can't wait for it. It's going to be launching on September 24th, 2021 for both PC, uh, PS4 and PS5. All right, next game that we have here, the game that started, or well, probably will start the trend of the director's cut, Death Stranding. Uh, Death Stranding came out, I believe, in 2019 to some um, divisive opinions or... Uh, whatnot uh, from uh, many reviewers or players or whatnot. Uh, and now we have the director's cut, which uh, adds a whole bunch of new content, uh, specifically for the uh, PS5. You get your whole haptic feedback and you know uh, adaptive triggers and whatnot. Uh, looks like they're also adding some new combat techniques. Uh, I believe some new weapons, uh, new a new mode like a, a training area that looks kind of cool um new delivery mechanics those were kind of funny to see um new story missions obviously um i don't know it looks fun i played uh death stranding before 
uh, it's definitely again that like I was saying previously with Jet it's one of those games where people assumed it was one thing but when it turned out to be another they just kind of dismissed it which just kind of seems like a shame uh, I found the game to be relaxing I mean obviously there were some jank controls on certain things but uh, it is just really satisfying to be able to overcome those types of things and watch the world grow as players interacted with it. So having all these new things come out just seems pretty awesome. Uh, more more fights with uh, improved combat, that looks pretty sweet. I, I know a general or almost widely agreed upon critique with the original base game was the combat wasn't too great. So them adding more and more to it, I feel like will maybe, I don't want to say will completely change the minds of a lot of players, but we'll probably bring some more people back and kind of, you know, give it more of a, a fair shake. And I find, I think people will like it a lot. It also adds a, a track racing mode. I, I know in the original Death Stranding, you know, players, you know, farmed materials to make these giant highways to make traveling easier. And now they're putting track racing. I mean, I guess, I guess, I mean, shit. Kojima is going after Mario Kart with death, death cart, stranding cart, death stranding cart. Uh, let's just call it death cart, strand cart. I can't decide. Uh, but that looks fun. That was really unexpected. <laughs> it, it, you could say that they got inspiration from y'all because of just adding a whole bunch of random stuff and i believe you uh I, i'm excited to try this out it, it's available uh for an upgrade of ten dollars if you have the ps4 version so it's not as bad as the uh ghost of tsushima one uh, which is pretty nice to hear um i'm excited to see uh you know all these things it looks fun to mess around with definitely try that new kart racing or track racing thing that look that looks like it can be fun uh but we'll see uh looks like it'll be launching on september 24th so keep your eye out eye out on that was that is that the same day as uh ooh, same day as uh lost judgment i can already tell you which one's probably gonna be uh the leader in that uh race during that day definitely lost judgment it's a newer game this is from a beloved franchise. But I think both are great. And then finally, looks like we cap it off with the uh, whole reason for the state of play, Deathloop. Now, if you remember in the previous podcast yesterday, I was talking about how I wasn't too interested in Deathloop. Um, I think after watching this, I am a lot more interested. I think my issue... My personal issues that stemmed from the game was the uh, fact that every time you showed gameplay of the game, it was always in a montage, and it just kind of seemed, I don't want to say janky, but kind of disjointed. And the fact that they did a much more long-form type of thing that was a little bit slower and kind of showed what the player could do and whatnot, instead of like just jamming it all into this type of you know cool uh, montage to kind of hype you up. I definitely like a lot of a lot of what I was seeing. Uh, I think one of my issues that I still have here is maybe I think it's the lighting or whatnot. It just kind of looks, uh, you know, like it strains the eye a little bit for me. But if that's just the case um, and everything else from what I've seen, uh, it showed. I think I can. I think I can dig it. Um, but there, uh, nothing that we didn't know too much. You have your gadgets to kill people you got your movement techniques to kill people you got your weapons to kill people all that kind of stuff uh looks like they're exporting a lot of stuff from uh, dishonored into this game uh you know your jumps your leaps your assassinations um they have a whole bunch of different guns and whatnot that are pretty cool uh in design wise uh they showcase something that they mentioned a long time ago uh that would be using the adaptive triggers in which um you see him, I think his name is Colt, uh, pick up a gun and it jams and you see him struggle with it. And I remember they were stating that um, guns could jam and if it jammed, it locks up the trigger on the controller. 
Um, so that'd be interesting to see. I wonder how I'm, these uh, adaptive triggers and uh, all those type of stuff with the controller. I see a lot of people going 50-50 with it. Some people really like it. Some people are kind of annoyed by it. I like what I uh, what I uh, use or what I've seen and whatnot with it. Um, and I mean, if you don't like it, you can always just turn it off. So I don't really see an issue with it. Uh, but I don't know. People that complain about it really like to complain about it for some reason. But we'll see uh, when the game comes out uh, on September 14th. Uh, for PS5 and PC. Also, just another quick tidbit. Uh, I love the music in the game, the really jazzy thing. And there was a section of music with the saxophone, I think, that rem that just transported me back to the PlayStation 2 days when I was playing Sly Cooper. I, I can't remember which portion of Sly Cooper. I think it was maybe the very beginning uh, or something around there uh, with the saxophone uh, where it, I think it it has like a small part of that in in the death loop trailer and I uh, I love that type of music um the just jazzy you know stealthy type music I think it's great I love it so that's just another plus for the game for me and that wraps it up that was all 32 minutes of that uh presentation uh if I had to grade it I'd give it a B it wasn't too bad um, it made me a little bit more excited for Deathloop, so that worked in its favor. Uh, Lost Judgment looked great. Fist looked great. Uh, what else was there? Uh, Death Stranding looked interesting. Uh, Sifu uh, was pretty great. Uh, sad to see it delayed. Uh, everything else wasn't too like heinous. I wasn't too mad at, or not mad, but like annoyed at what I was seeing. I think the lowest thing was the Arcade Again. Um, from the show but that was uh, pretty early on so they kind of got it out of the way real quick uh but yeah that was the uh, state of play uh nothing too big um obviously not what their e3 presentation would have been granted i don't know if they're even planning an e3 like presentation uh, but i think there's gonna there should be another state of play uh later on this summer who knows if it's september or august or whatever because uh, they did say that um, obviously they set expectations before this saying there's no PSVR 2 there's no new God of War there's no information on Horizon uh, but they stated that you would see those later on this summer so I can imagine there will be another state of play at some point um, it just doesn't matter when but this was a nice little taste of uh, information from PlayStation you know we don't really get a lot of information from them so it was nice to kind of hear some things and that was the biggest news of the day. Let's go on to another topic here. Uh, just a random topic uh, that uh, I came across and saw. Thought it was funny. It was picked up by some other people. Uh, Minecraft in South Korea is now rated R. Uh, obviously the title itself probably used mostly just to get clicks. Uh, but essentially what this boils down to is that uh, South Korea has these Cinderella laws, I believe they're called, in which they don't want kids under a certain age gaming excessively cert like past a certain hour. Uh, so they will uh, block certain games, I think. Um, and to get by that, I believe Microsoft uh, had uh, it a requirement or a, a partial requirement to where you had to sign in uh, through uh, Xbox Live account to play Minecraft. Um, and then I think just recently they made it more mandatory or whatever. And because of that, it has bumped the age rating of Minecraft in South Korea to uh, a 19 plus rating. Even though the game itself is actually rated 12 plus, but since you have to sign in through Xbox Live, it bumps it up. Um, and people in the players in South Korea aren't really too happy with that. Uh, I know there's a petition uh, with the couple thousands of signatures on it to try and get that to be undone with the Cinderella law but who really knows I mean it, I know South Korea is pretty big on games so maybe they'll look pretty heavily into this uh, but as of now uh, Minecraft is a uh, Minecraft's for adults 
Minecraft Minecraft is not your kid's game. It's not it's not for the kid in the playground with the with the creeper shirt doing d doing the floss or whatever they do now. It's for the it's for the adult, the college the college age adult. That's who Minecraft's for. Uh, but we'll we'll see what goes on with that later on. I'm sure they'll get it sorted out. I mean, my, Minecraft is a billion dollar IP. I doubt they'll want to just just rip out an entire country from their profits. Uh, so we'll see what goes on from there. And then our next two pieces of news are concerning uh, studios. Uh, the first one will be uh, from uh, a studio now called Ripple Effect. Um, it is a rebrand. Um, they were previously known as Dice LA, uh, which was also, uh, I don't know if it was previously known as, but they came from a studio called uh, Danger Close Games, um, all of which owned by EA. So EA had dissolved uh, Danger Close Games, which I believed helped or made the Medal of Honor series. Uh, turned it into Dice LA, which became a support studio and usually worked on the Battlefield massive game that EA uh, owns. And now it has been rebranded again to Ripple Effect. Um, it stated that they're still helping with the Battlefield machine over at EA, uh, but that they will uh, focus on new games as well. So that's cool to see. Um, I mentioned this last podcast with uh, with the uh, studio that uh, PlayStation bought. I believe it was Vivinet, something like that. That uh, that uh, support port studio, uh, in which you know they could also probably make games as well. This seems like a similar situation where they were a support studio, uh, helping uh, the Battlefield type things, and now they're looking to make their new some new games. So that'll be cool to see. But as always, this is EA. They they would much prefer dissolving whatever studios they have into funneling money into Battlefield and uh, just just have IPs die. But if they survive and turn out a great game, that that's just awesome. Hopefully, they get to live on and you know make more games and not just be converted back into to a dice uh, studio to just make more uh, Battlefield games. But, like I said, uh, with a lot of these things, time will tell, and we'll, uh, we'll just have to see what projects they have lined up. Uh, the other studio is uh, the CD Projekt Red. Uh, they have opened a new Vancouver studio, CD Projekt Red Vancouver, from an acquisition of uh, Digital Scapes. Uh, this is a development studio that uh, helped or assisted in other games such as Dying Light um, and also uh, Cyberpunk. Uh, CD Projekt has acquired them, uh, rebranded them, and they are located in Vancouver in which they will continue to help with whatever new stuff that CD Projekt Red uh, comes out. Uh, not much to say here. Uh, it just seems like it's just another studio that's going to help try and fix the mess that was Cyberpunk. Um, kind of sucks that, uh, you know, th this might have been a great time for for CD Projekt Vancouver. Uh, but it's going to be mired in the fact that, oh, they worked with Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk was a trash fire, so they might not be too great. But we'll just have to see what they do. What they, can do. I mean, I doubt uh, CD Projekt's gonna just abandon Cyberpunk, so they're most likely gonna just be working on fixing and fixing Cyberpunk and just try and douse the fires from the exploded uh, Cyberpunk corpse from that game. Uh, man, it really shows when you mess up and just absolutely piss on your uh, players uh, you lose almost all uh, credibility and a bunch of stuff and it just it's gonna affect you entirely with what should be you know pretty cool or fun news 
uh, since I think CD Projekt's mostly based in Europe, and now they're expanding into um, to the um, the Americas. But uh, we'll see what they do. We'll see, you know, what they uh, can push out, and see if they help with any other projects. But until then, another CG Project Studio. And that's uh, that's mostly it for the uh, gaming news. I do, uh, like I said, I've been uh, just trying to figure out what to how to structure this uh, podcast. I think uh, I think I like doing news first, uh, just because it's it's things to talk about. It, it's happenings throughout the day, and people are you know just interested in it. But now I got a new segment. I got a random news segment right after the gaming news. It has nothing to do with gaming. I just saw it, kind of chuckled a little bit. Why is this a thing? But it is. And that is that Heinz, the uh, ketchup mustard maker people, uh, are making a petition to have hot dogs and hot dog buns be the same uh, quantity per package. So six hot dogs, there should be a bag of six hot dog buns. Don't know why this is a thing. It's always been a joke. Just complete marketing. Uh, I just thought it was kind of stupid, especially since like there is no set rule on hot dog numbers. I love hot dogs. I'm, I'm a I'm a chubby boy. I love eating hot dogs. I might even make a hot dog after this. Uh, but there are so many different brands of hot dogs with so many different numbers of hot dogs and sizes and whatnot. You got you know you got your regular. 12 pack of hot dog weenies um and then like you have your big boy you know sausage girthy meat cylinders that come in packs of four that taste delicious those are the ones i like to get because i i think they're more premium meat granted it's all probably just processed so i mean there's always going to be an inadequate amount of buns to hot dogs or an inadequate number Maybe they'll just make it to where it's either six or twelve for whatever thing. So at least there's at least there's one brand of it that that you have where you don't have excess amount of buns or of hot dogs or whatever. But like I said, just complete marketing, kind of stupid. But I just saw it, laughed a little bit. Thought I'd talk about it because uh, it was just a fun little read. And with that, that is all that I have in terms of news for this podcast. And now we're going into our third segment. What did I play today? Uh, nothing much different. I feel like the segment's going to get weird since uh, I'm planning to make a video every single day. Um, I mean, you would assume that I would um, just play the same things over and over. I uh, did not play Lee today proud of myself that thing is a drug and i need to be weaned off it so didn't play today pretty happy with that uh played some more uh zelda breath of the wild same deals uh i'm i'm enjoying exploring and finding the little golden poop seeds or whatever they are to expand my inventory um just trying to be as efficient as possible just to just because that's how my mind works with those types of games and it's just got to scour and make sure i get everything and plot the most efficient path uh still same same uh same what what was it um i'm not good at with words uh gripes with the game that there we go gripes um weapon durability sucks uh open areas are boring uh enemies are copy paste for the most part but they're fun to beat up and mess around with uh trying to learn how to parry better in that game i uh i died like 10 times trying to parry a uh the little laser beams from the machine thing uh i don't know if it's different with different shields or if there's different timings or whatnot uh but i seem almost incapable of grasping it so i'm just dying over and over until i finally kill the thing with the parry uh but we'll see how that goes still enjoying the game still liking it uh there was another game i was uh just uh messing around with uh it was a uh 
Oh, well, you know, it wasn't a game. Uh, it, well, I guess it is technically a game. Uh, the, well, of course it's a game. It has a game in it. It's a card game. Uh, it was the Legends of Runeterra game. Um, I mean, I know I said I'm trying to wean off League and I'm going on to a League offshoot. But it's a pretty fun game. Uh, it is uh, essentially like Hearthstone, uh, but more... Uh, I think closely more related to Magic. Uh, pretty fun. Uh, free to play. Uh, you would assume that there would be a whole bunch of microtransactions to get a whole bunch of cards. Uh, not really. It's pretty easy to get free cards and make a fairly comparable tech. Um, I've been rocking this uh, this uh, death, uh, death type deck where you use Nasses and Thresh to just power up uh, your Nasses and then kill them and use the the, the death uh, effect to kill your enemy's uh, life point nexus thing. It's pretty fun. Um, still working on it, trying to get better at it. But it's a really it's a really fun card game. It's really pretty also. And I think that's all I have for today. I should really I really need to. Not play more games, but just kind of expand more on stuff. Because I like to, when I play games, I really uh, just tend to focus on one. Which I think most people do, but uh, I really just kind of play until I'm burnt out. And I feel like if I have a little bit more cycle of games, I can kind of play the game itself, whatever ones, a lot longer. Because I don't have to just focus on it. I'm thinking about, uh, I've been thinking about my past and I remember a long time ago when I used to visit my grandparents' house in Mexico, uh, they would live next to a neighbor that owned, well, not, well, yeah, they owned it, but, or rented it, but they had an arcade, a quote-unquote arcade room uh, with a whole bunch of arcade cabinets. Um, and if you had to make a guess, this is in Mexico, so the uh, arcade cabinets were SNK. Um, and uh, if you're wondering why I said a uh, it was a an easy guess it's because uh, in south america the most popular types of arcade cabinets there were the s and k ones i believe because they were relatively cheap that's why king of fighters is so prominent down south because street fighter uh was pretty expensive but the uh the king of fighters ones uh were not and they had uh, they had three i can't remember what the third one was but the two were uh, Metal Slug. I don't remember which one. I think it was maybe three or four. I think it was three. And then King of Fighters, either 99 or 95. And I love just throwing pesos into those machines and playing. I love the Metal Gear one, or the, not the Metal Gear, the Metal Slug one. I would play that for as long as I was there. And I just love dumping uh, pesos into it. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking, I, I have a PS2 uh, Metal Slug uh, collection. I'm thinking about pumping that in and playing through that. Those games are awesome. I love those styles of games. Um, so I think maybe I'll add that to my list of games. Um, I also played the King of Fighters uh, arcade cabinet they had there. Uh, I, of course, I say play, but I was really just mashing buttons and I forgot what his name was, but he uh, was a red-haired dude with, like, a chains around his legs or something that I would play him a lot. Um, and uh, I, I, liked, I liked it. I thought it was fun. I never could get the hang of fighting games. And looking back, uh, now that there's a new King of Fighters coming out, I was looking at it a little bit, and uh, apparently they have some pretty wild, uh, like, movement type like um how do i say it like you know in fighting games where you have to do like quarter circle half circle whatever to perform a move apparently king of fighters have some pretty crazy ones and i was like oh man uh is that really in all those games and apparently yeah they were in a lot of these games and uh it was really complicated or something it was annoying to figure out so I guess that's why I was just never too great. I was just massing buttons. And um, maybe why I was kind of discouraged and 
playing more of the fighting game because I just could never do anything. Um, but I do have a King of Fighters, I think, 2000s for the PlayStation 2. I might pop that in and see what's up with it. I don't know if I'll play the new King of Fighters that's going to come out eventually, but it's really nice to revisit those types of games because they're so ingrained into uh, childhood um, that uh, adding them to my list of games will give me more to talk about in the upcoming podcast. But that looks like it's going to be it for me. Uh, thank you so much for listening into the podcast. I will see you tomorrow. Um, see what we talk about. See if any news comes up. Uh, but tomorrow is Friday, so don't know if there's going to be a lot to to cover. Or if there is, it's probably going to be uh, mostly negative news. Cause I think these types of uh, companies spit out you know, bad news on Friday, so it gets lost in the weekend. But until then, this is M, your host for the VG Cantina's podcast. Enjoy your day.